Hey everyone, Joe and Isaiah is here from The Automator. And the other day we were on a client call and uh, it was really funny because we're working on this long project for him using um, various things. We're doing some scraping and doing a bunch of stuff. And then one of the parts he wanted to use ChatGPT to process something through it, something we get from the web scraping, dump it into there and get some feedback. And we're like, oh, we, we got you covered there. We have a library for doing that. Well, yes. when we went in there, it um, it had drastically changed. So I was ChatGPT4. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but the whole structure and how things are submitted, right, were drastic changes for the better overall, thankfully. Uh, but Isaiah had done some work and he's updated our library. So we thought you'd give a little demo here of, of using it. Uh, and maybe we'll pause in between if we use the, the version four, because it, it definitely the four is much slower on average. But yes. uh, it's pretty cool. So right now, the way how this is set up is that you will need always an API key that we're reading from a file at this point. Which um, is this, why don't you, let's also mention so people don't get confused. We were using our client's API because we were testing with his, but he didn't have access to four. That's and right. And this was reading and he's like, oh, you had to have paid money on your API in order to have access to the that four inside right. of the API you know, world. So I, I would assume that it doesn't matter how much you paid. It's just the fact that they validated that your card is right. valid. Right. And as soon as they do that, then they open that possibility on the customer's API that we were testing. It was not listed. We do have here one of the um, functions that you can use with this library is to lit list what APIs are available to you. So through that API key, I can get a list of the models that are available. And you will find some of them, like, for example, in our case, we can access GPT-4, um, the latest version, 0.6.13. Um, but uh, in our testing, we had to switch back to Turbo because it is a little bit slow. Not sure if it is because we're not paying customers. Well, the four, the like, four like is premium, slow. Yeah. yeah, the three point four. But, but I guess maybe if you're a premium subscriber, maybe you get a little bit better bandwidth. I don't know. You know, but, yeah. that, that's the confusing part because there is yeah. a difference between the API and using ChatGPT's GUI interface. Right, yeah. So I'm not really we sure pay, how it works. We pay for the API. Like I have an account and we have paid not a lot, a couple of dollars, but we have paid, which is why we have access. But I don't pay the roughly twenty dollars a month for access right. to four from the GUI from the browser, but we have access to four from the API. It's, it's so right. yeah. so there you go. Now you the the open api library that i created you can modify a, uh, several of the things that they allow you to modify in the api like the model how many tokens you want the temperature and so on so you can modify those um i'm just making sure that i'm selecting the 18th model which in this case corresponds in my list to um chat gpt3 turbo you can write this as a string I'm just using it from the model list, but you can just type it out from the API. Yeah. And then what we're doing right here is we're sending two different prompts in a loop down here. And we're sending the answer that they give us back to our output window. We're using our output window function that it doesn't matter if you have any editor, it will always send it to the correct editor window. Um, and if you don't have an editor that has an output window, it would just create its own. So that's all what that is doing. Now, interestingly enough, this is something new with the new model. You can set instructions, like special messages that are not part of your query. You will see the difference in a few seconds here. When I go ahead and list, run the script um, with these two prompts, I got one in here and a second one there. The prompt is, what is the size of United States in kilometers? The total area is this, 9 million square kilometers. That's good. The other one is, what is the size of the moon in inches? Well, you know, it cannot be accurately measured in inches, but we can go and go into this. And it gives you an answer. Cool. Um, that took about four seconds for it to reply. Whenever I switch back to chat GPT-4, it can take up to 30 seconds for an answer. So that's <laughs> uh, a different number. But now we have, uh, I added a set instruction method that allows you to send some special messages. Um, when you're chatting with um, ChatGPT, there's your question, 
but there are some instructions that you make before the question. And the thing is that in the browser, you do not have a way to specify which one is which one. But in the API, we do have a way to tell ChatGPT, hey, this one is not part of my question. This one is an instruction that you have to follow. In this case, we created some stupid <laughs> instructions here. You're a flippant AI that is always sarcastic. That's the first one. And the second one is all your answers should contain the words okay, right? So it was just to make it obvious to see if we could see in the answers these two particular instructions. And it was really good at it. So when we went ahead and run the code um, and we tried it with different prompts, uh, the answer is, oh, I don't know. Maybe you should ask Google or something, okay? <laughs> so that was a very funny <laughs> answer. Like, yeah, okay, cool. And the other one, what is the size of the moon in inches? Oh, sure. Let me just whip out my ruler and measure the moon for you in inches. You know, so, so that is funny. But we got other answers in which this particular instruction, it was putting it, it was placing it in different locations in the answers, right? So here's the interesting part. I am setting the temperature to be very low. The lower the temperature is, the more strict it becomes and it's not very creative. So I can set that number up to two, if I remember right from the documentation. Well, I was going to mention earlier is like, it used to be one, right? Yeah, Between it used to be only one. Yeah. If we were with the client and I was looking in my playground, I'm like, mine goes to two now. Um, right, <laughs> that, that was yeah. a totally new thing. Okay. So, so the, the, the higher the number, the more creative it becomes. So uh, you can go ahead and change those modifications and see how it affects the uh, um, answers that you get. At this point, you see that the answers are a little bit bigger now. Um, and oh, well, so we got the OMK here in the middle of the string, which Joe was trying to take a look at it and say, oh, it was always putting it on the end. Not really. It seems to me that he's very good at just putting it in a very place that is conversational. Yeah, conversationally valid, right? So, oh, the size of the United States, okay. Uh, well, it should be this amount. So it will find a way to make it conversational. And it is not just robotically just put, placing it anywhere. Um, and in the end, we are getting very interesting responses um, from ChatGPT. And if we go ahead and let's give it a whirl, if I switch you to ChatGPT4, so right now this one was about five seconds for both prompts. Remember, I'm making a loop here, so I could pass many other prompts here. But if I go with ChatGPT4, that amount of time that it takes for actually answering back sometimes varies a lot. And it might be more than 30 seconds. We have been several time instances. In, in this case, it was 15 seconds, 13 seconds. That's okay. It's better than what I got. But sometimes it went... Um, Quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. It went up, up to 30 seconds last time that I tried. So there you go. Um, we will be uh, testing this library a little bit more before releasing it, but it is ready to be tested with the new chat GPT-4. We also talked about it and we decided to leave the earlier library we created alone because um, it still yeah. existed and we could use it. But we're like, hey, right. let's create a whole separate one. And uh, that way we, we have them completely separate and we're not, you're not making it more complicated because I'm not sure who would ever use the older approach. When being able to set that context, uh, the system thing of of giving it a, a situation to to think about is really really powerful. And yes, um, so I, I think most people want to have. We will have the legacy version in right. there as well, but the new one here is going to be pointing to the correct location. Now you can change the location of where you want the OpenAI API to point but usually it's good to stay with the default one if you wanted to. And of course, it defaults to certain values uh, that you can change as you need. Yeah, there's uh, you can limit the number of tokens, right? Also, the yeah. that top P, that was the what percent of it? Like it'll give you yes. one answer versus many. Is that what you said, if I remember right? So here's the thing. This N here is how many answers you're going to get. Okay. If I modify this number to 10, then I could use the top P to say, give me the top 50% of those answers. So it's going to pick the top 50. And you can bring this number down to the 10%. So the top 10% of the 
of the answers. So it comes up with 10 answers and then it returns the top 10 of those answers. Um, but basically, here's the thing. If you use the temperature, you shouldn't be using the top P. They both do a similar task. They narrow how many answers or how the answer is going to be working. So go ahead and set one or the other, but not both. At the moment, however, I'm doing it in the script is not taking that into account, but that's why I'm telling you I'm going to be doing some tests because in when I send the request, it will pick one or the other, not send them both at the same time. Right now, I'm just using the temperature as is, not nothing else. And then we were looking at the, the different models and the tokens, and we have access to one, I think, for version four, and it had, was it the 16,000, I think is the one we have access to? Yes, there, that is correct. There's one listed that said 32,000, but we didn't see that in our model list yet. So right. if you guys have seen it yet, and that's where we're like, we're just not understanding exactly how oh, I, who yeah. has access to what right right so at the moment i see the 16k turbo version but on the help file we saw that there is a 32k version of this as well but we i we don't not, have in list. To that. Right. not in our list that's right yeah so just keep that in mind but and at some point because we were talking about should we be you know keeping should we track how many tokens are in our conversation and the more I thought about it, Zesh, I didn't bring this up, but, you, you know, you kind of convinced me we should. But after I thought about it some more, because you can select different models and different models have different number of tokens they can accept, that's where I was like, you know what? That, that's going to be a problem, yeah. That's yeah, so totally... we do need to, yeah, the, small, the other ones that don't have such large limits, that's where it's, it's really, it's still going to yeah. continue to be an issue. So, yeah, you know, we definitely should do that. So, all right, hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video. You know, we submit videos out release them twice a week and we are the largest auto hockey channel out there um consider joining our hero group we talk a lot about ai and chat gpt in the hero group and you, how people are using it and helping others use it so thanks for watching cheers bye guys